Hey, Josh Powers here with Quixel, and today we're going to go over the extremely useful scatter modifier within the mass stack to add some depth and character to our textures. So let's dive right in. The scatter modifier is a very handy feature that allows us to distribute our mask in a particle-like fashion. We can find scatter by clicking on the modifier button here, and then selecting scatter. At first glance, this modifier might look complicated, but it's actually pretty straightforward with very clear setting labels. Let's first start with density, and as the name implies, adjusting this slider will determine how many instances of the mask will be generated. The lower this is, the fewer we'll see. And the higher it is, the more we'll get. While the slider's max value defaults at 100, we can numerically type in a higher value if we want. Size range is a slider with two handles giving us a minimum and maximum setting. By adjusting the left handle, we're raising the minimum scale for any given instance of the duplication. And if we adjust the right handle, we're setting the max value of the duplication. So by setting the minimum and maximum range, we're telling scatter to only give us results falling between these two values. If we don't want to have any scale variations, all we need to do is make sure that these two handles are pressed together so the min and max values are the same. And then, like the other two handled sliders in the mass stack, if we hold down shift, we can adjust both handles at the same time. Angle range uses the same minimum and maximum system that size range uses. This slider will allow us to determine how much rotation we want to allow from the original mask we're scattering. If we push the handles to their respectable limits, we're effectively allowing scatter to randomly rotate the mask all 360 degrees. However, if we don't want any random rotation, we can simply bring the two sliders together and then adjust the angle manually to our liking. Brightness Jitter will assign a random brightness value to each instance of the mask. This is a great way to get height fluctuation and separation between the different masks. If we pull the slider all the way down to zero, we're telling Scatter that we don't want any brightness jitter, and it will exclusively use the original mask's value. But as we bump the slider up, we'll see various levels of brightness assigned to each instance. The higher we go, the broader the range becomes until we max out at 1, which gives us values ranging from full black to full white. And then we have random seed. Adjusting the random seed slider will give us different results for the layout, rotation, and size of the instances, as well as the brightness jitter. We can also lock the distribution of the masks to a grid-like fashion, which can be very useful at times. The settings for grid are the exact same, except density has been broken into X and Y sliders to allow us even more control over the grid instances. So if we bump these up to around six, and then take away both the scale and angle variants, we'll have a nice and evenly distributed mask. Also, let's say we wanted this particular detail of the mask scattered, but not the rest of the mask beneath it. If we turn this map layer to add, you can see that the scatter modifier is scattering the entire mask which is not the look we're going for. However, if we hold down Alt and click on the scatter layer, we're locking this modifier to the map component directly below, which makes the modifier only affect the layer or layers it's locked to. So now we're free to make adjustments to the scatter layer independently of the other layers beneath. Layer lock works for all components and modifiers, so be sure to utilize it as it is a tremendously helpful feature. Let's take a quick look at how scatter can be used. Let's go ahead and add some moss to these wooden shingles. We'll first activate this mossy surface I grabbed from the Megascans library, and then give it a mass stack. I did make a few adjustments to the surface's settings, so let's quickly review them. First, I'll set the blend mode to opacity masked. This means that I'm not utilizing height data to reveal the surface, and will be relying exclusively on the mask I create. I also set wrap to underlying to one, which will conform the surface to the height data beneath. And then I cranked blur underlying to seven. This will blur the height data beneath so that the details are less sharp and pronounced. This setting is very important to help sell the moss's thickness on the shingles. If we lower this setting, it starts to feel like a very thin layer of moss, but we want this to feel like it's really dense. So by maxing out the blur underlying, we can get that look. So let's go back to the mass stack and add a map component. We'll set the selection to Library Asset, and then we'll click on this folder icon to select an asset from the Megascans library. We'll do a quick search for brown moss, and select this decal here. 
The only thing we'll need to do now is choose the opacity mask as our source texture from the drop-down menu. If we go into mask mode by pressing 9 on the keyboard, we can see that we're now using the opacity texture of the atlas surface as our mask. Alright, now that we have a good mossy looking patch mask, we're ready to toss on our scatter modifier. We'll go ahead and manually adjust the density to 450, and then we'll pull the max size handle way down to avoid any one patch being too big. Since we want this to feel organic and natural, we'll allow for a full 360 degree rotation. And then for the brightness jitter, we'll keep it fairly subtle so that there's some brightness differentiation between each instance, but nothing too dark. And then lastly, we'll adjust the seed until we have something we're happy with. And just like that, we were able to add some believable, natural looking moss onto the roof tiles utilizing a single atlas opacity texture and the scatter modifier. Another handy way we can put the scatter modifier to use is to quickly create unique height information from a Megascan surface. So let's throw in a map component, and then we'll choose the library asset option. In the library, we'll do a quick search for moss. And then we'll select this mossy ground surface right here. And then we'll also leverage the displacement map for the surface by choosing displacement in the drop-down menu. Unlike the previous example with the moss on the roof tiles, in this case, we're using a tiling texture. So the problem here is that if we apply the scatter modifier now, each of the scattered instances will be a perfect square. That's because the scatter modifier will scatter the mask as it's viewed edge to edge, which is how we would expect it to behave. So to solve this, what I like to do is add a circular pattern on top of the map component, and then set both repeats to one and the spacing sliders to 10. We'll then set the layer to multiply, and now we have a circular cutout of the displacement map. After that, we can drop in a blur modifier to really soften the transition, yet still have a black trim all the way around. This step isn't entirely necessary, especially some cases more than others, but I like to do it to make sure to avoid any seams. All right, now that we've gotten rid of the border, we can add our scatter modifier. Now, as we scatter the mask around, we can see that we no longer have those seams that we had before, allowing everything to feel very naturally blended. As we can see, it took just a few layers in the mask stack for us to be able to take any Megascan surface layer and use it to create something new and unique. Okay, that just about does it for the scatter modifier. As always, I hope you were able to get a better understanding of how this specific feature functions and that it will help you create breathtaking textures. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.